Well, good morning. Welcome to Pine Island United Methodist Church, where we exist to reach people with God's love, transform lives, and change the world. My name is Kaylee Vita. I'm the pastor here. We're thrilled that you're worshiping with us today, whether you are here in person or whether you're joining us online. I'd like to open with this prayer today. Will you pray with me? O bread of heaven, come down. Come down and fill us with your spirit, for your spirit satisfies like no other. We hunger and thirst for you this morning and long to be nurtured in your love and forgiveness. So we come to this sacred time and this sacred place where our hungers are finally and fully satisfied, as only your bread can do. We will wait and listen for your leading in this hour. Amen. Let's worship together. So I have something... Excuse me, I have something fun for you this morning, or at least it was fun for us. Um, as you can see, our youth praise team is back in full action. And uh, I thought for a really neat little back to school um, Sunday for them, we let them each pick a song for the service today. So this is a uh, youth chosen song selection day. Um, but I wanted to make it fun for you guys. So I have little sheets out in the narthex where the refreshments normally are with the four songs that they picked and their names. And you get to try to guess at the end of the service which which one of our lovely youth up here picked which song. And put your name on it, because if you get it right, if you get them all right, I'll bring you a treat next week, okay? So we thought that that would be fun. Um, So no hinting if you might already know back there in the booth who's is who's. And don't go and badger them for answers. Themselves, oh, yes. Just in case people don't know their first oh, names. Oh, yeah, let's do that. So we'll start on the end. Go ahead and tell them your name. Kelly. And then? Kenna. Kenna, she says. Ava. And he is Kaysen. He doesn't have a mic yet because he's over here on the cajon. But, um, so we have Kelly on the end, Kenna, Ava, and Kaysen. All right, so have fun trying to figure out who picked which song, and I enjoyed it because we knew that we were singing songs that they all liked this this Sunday, so. All right, and we're going to let Kaysen start us off.
time to greet your neighbor and say hello to a new face this morning. As you make your way back to your seats, I have a few announcements for us today. First of all, today is our food and fellowship meal after service, so the team has prepared Sloppy Joe's for us, and they've got chips, and um, even if you didn't bring a side or dessert today, you can stay and have lunch with us. There's always plenty of food, so we'd love to have you join us around the table. Um, and then I want to let you all know about a reminder about the Monday night study that's happening that um, we meet over here in the Sunday school room on Monday evenings from at 6.30 p.m. And our study this time is called In the Line of Jesus, Five Women and Their Stories. This is a study um, on the five women who are found in the lineage of Jesus in the Gospel of Matthew. Even if you didn't come last week, no worries. You can hop in any time. Each story is its own story, so you won't... It doesn't build on each other. You can, stop, uh, you can stop in any time and join us, and we'd love to have you. And it is a five-week study, so we'll go through the beginning of September, and then we'll see what comes next after that. And then, ladies, I wanted to let you know that the Women's Circle meets this Tuesday um, at, from 1230 to about 2 o'clock. They meet over in the office building in rooms 1 and 2, over to my left, your right. And this month, the special speaker is from the Red Cross. So all ladies are welcome. Bring your own lunch. Uh, drinks and dessert are always provided. It's always a great time. So bring a friend and come out for a fun afternoon. And then finally, those black books that are at the end of your pew, if you take a moment to sign those, let us know that you're here today. Um, if you want to give us an email, we can get you on the email list to, uh, for our newsletter that goes out every Wednesday with a little uh, video from me and a, a calendar of the events that are happening around here. And now, I think if Mo's ready... You all want to come up today? Big kids? We're never too big for the children's message. Right? Can all be kids at heart? Hello, everybody. It's good to see you. How are you today? I'm so happy I have so many people with me today. It's been so long since I've had this many. Oh, it makes me so happy. All right. So have you guys heard of digestion before? Yeah. 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 You know what that means? It's like when your body digests food. It takes in food and it, it mixes it up and makes it into good, yummy vitamins and proteins and stuff for your body. You know about that? Yeah with your stomach and everything. Well, do you know when you're digesting things? Like, do you know in your brain, I am digesting food right now? Do you think about that? No? No. We don't think about that, right? We don't control our stomachs and our intestines and stuff. Well, this might be a weird question, I know. But digestion is a lot like Jesus. So, in the Bible, Jesus calls himself the bread of life. Now, we can't eat Jesus, unfortunately. But this is kind of like a metaphor. So Jesus is the bread of life. We take him in, and he's really good for our bodies. But we don't always know when he's there. We don't always know that he's doing good things for us. Just like digestion. We take in food, and it does good things for us. It powers our bodies. But we don't always know when that's happening. 
just like we don't always know when Jesus is right there, but he always is. He's always right there with you. Can we pray about that? All right, repeat after me. Dear God, thank you so much for being bread of life. You're always there, even when we don't know. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for joining me, everybody. Let's go. The answer is always Jesus, right, folks? Jesus is di like digestion. It's great. <laughs> well, freely we have received, thus we freely give. Grace upon grace, let us express our love and appreciation to God by extending the grace and mercy of God to a hungry world. As our ushers prepare to come and serve us today, I'll remind you that there are several ways that you can give. Those are listed for you on the screen. Let's pray. O oh Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. We bow before you and thank you for the privilege to participate in your acts of kindness and love here on earth. May these gifts truly become instruments of your purposes here in our church, our community, and around the world. Amen. morning. Please join me in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, what an awesome God you are. You've given us all things, including this beautiful day, this opportunity to share this time together with our church family and the bread of life. And yet, Father, sometimes we go on our own way, trying to do so many things on our own without regard to your commandments. We think we have all the answers and we fail to ask you for help. And you're still there patiently waiting for us with your arms wide open, loving us unconditionally. Please forgive us, Lord, for our lapses in judgment. And thank you for your forgiveness. Thank you for all the many blessings we have received. Thank you for the freedom we have to gather today and worship you. We ask for your loving touch to be placed on those who are suffering, God. We ask for peace in this world you have created. If only we could all set aside our hatred and anger and prejudices and love one another as you have instructed us to do, the world would be safer and more beautiful for us to live in. 
Please bless Pastor Kaylee as she leads us today, that her words will be your words and give us a deeper understanding of Scripture. And now, Father, we come together to pray the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Morning. morning. Our reading today is from John chapter 6, verses 35, and then verses 41 through 51. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Then the Jews began to complain about him because he said, I am the bread that comes down from heaven. They were saying, is this not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How can he now say, I have come down from heaven? Jesus answered them, 
Do not complain among yourselves. No one can come to me unless drawn by the Father who sent me. And I will raise that person up to the last day. It is written in the prophets that they shall all be taught by God. Everyone who has heard that learned from the Father comes to me. Not that everyone has seen the Father except the one who is from God. He has seen the Father verily truly. I tell you, whatever, whoever believes has, has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness and they died. And this is the bread that comes down from heaven so that the one may eat of it and may not die. I am the living bread that comes down from heaven. When whoever eats of this bread shall live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Roger, for reading our scripture today, and thank you to Mary for our morning prayer. Well, we are smack in the middle of our Bread of Life series. Now, I don't know about all of you, but I kind of feel like I am in the middle of the loaf of bread that's being made. I feel like I'm in the kneading portion, being flipped around and pushed down, not sure which way really is up. It's not at all surprising to me that we find some folks grumbling about what Jesus is saying. It is confusing, even a little unorthodox. But there's no bones about it. Jesus is the bread of life. He is the bread that came down from heaven. He is the living bread. He says it over and over repeatedly in this short little section of verses. And I, for one, do believe him. Let's pray. Almighty God, as, you, as we have heard your gracious word, make us hungry for Jesus, your holy manna, that we may feed on him the bread of life. Amen. So Jesus fed over 5,000 folks with five loaves and two fish. There was great abundance in that story of grass for them to sit on, of food for them to eat, of leftovers that I hope went home with somebody, of Jesus who offered all of himself to the people. And then Jesus walked on water when he knew that the disciples were out in a storm on the Sea of Galilee. He went to them in their time of distress. And they got to the other side and lo and behold, the crowd had followed them. Not because of who Jesus was, but because of what he had done for them. They wanted more bread. But Jesus, he calls them out on that, and he tells them not to work for bread that perishes, that won't last, but to work for bread that endures for eternal life. This isn't work that we have to do Remember, it's not transactional. This is relational. The work of God, the work that is ours to do is to believe. To believe in Jesus. Believe he is the bread of life. Be confident in him. Trust him. The crowd that day, though, they wanted another sign. So like us, well, at least like me, I'll just speak for myself. Can I have just one more sign to assure me that it really is you, Jesus? And they bring up the manna in the desert, but Jesus tells them it wasn't Moses who gave them the manna, it was God. God gives us the true bread of life. And they, of course, want this bread. Give us this bread always, they say. And Jesus says to them, I am the bread of life. And that's where we start today, right where we ended with those words from Jesus. Now, the Revised Common Lectionary, which I use 
to help me decide what, I, what scripture to use each week, they skip a few verses here in the, chap, in the chapter 6 of John. You can see from our reference today, they skipped 36 through 40. And in these verses, Jesus again tells them that he came down from heaven. He was sent not to do his own will, but to do the will of the Father who sent him. And the will of the Father is this, that all who see the Son and believe in him may have eternal life. None will be lost, like the leftovers on the day he fed that crowd. The instructions that he gave to the disciples were, gather up the fragments left over so that nothing may be lost. With Jesus, nothing is lost. Nothing is forgotten or left behind. All are found. All have the opportunity for eternal life if we do our work, which is to believe, to eat the bread. But there is some complaining, some grumbling. John tells us, It's the Jews. Now, John, he likes this phrase. It's a difficult one, though, because it makes it sound like there were some who were Jews and some who were not, but that isn't really the case. The crowd that's been following Jesus, it's a majority of them were Jewish. Jesus is Jewish. So it isn't that all of the Jews began to complain. It's more like the Jews who don't follow Jesus begin to complain and grumble. In fact, this group who is complaining, they seem to be some kind of inside group. They they know things about Jesus, which makes it seem like they might be those from the synagogue in Capernaum. While the previous crowd that we've encountered were outsiders, both literally and figuratively, They were outside getting fed and they followed Jesus and they don't seem to really know anything about Jesus. Now, John, he doesn't make a very clear distinction between who is grumbling and who is not, but grumbling is part of the Jewish tradition, the Exodus story, anyone. And it would seem that John is recreating that story here. The people were fed bread and meat in the form of fish by Jesus, much like they received bread and meat in the form of quail in the wilderness. There's a lot of talk of bread that comes from heaven, much like the manna in the wilderness was bread from heaven. The people are lost and searching like the people who are wandering in the desert with Moses as their leader. Oh, and the grumbling. Because out in the wilderness, there was lots of grumbling and complaining about not having bread to eat, about not having meat, about not having water, wanting to go back to Egypt because they thought it was better there. They grumbled about Moses. You name it, they grumbled and complained. Now, It's funny, this is actually a new word in this gospel. John hasn't used it before, but it's a very common word throughout what's called the Septuagint. So that's the Greek version of the Hebrew Bible, what we call the Old Testament. And this word for grumbling and complaining is used to talk about the complaints in the wilderness when God was providing manna the bread from heaven. And here it is again. When people are grumbling and when God is providing bread from heaven in the form of Jesus, the living bread. They're complaining because Jesus has said he's from heaven. But they know who Jesus is. They know who his family is. He's not from heaven He's from Mary and Joseph. Now, another funny thing. Jesus says to them, don't complain among yourselves. 
Which means it wasn't like they were out in the open just grumbling and complaining. They were over here doing it amongst themselves. But Jesus knows what they are doing. That Jesus, he's always listening. And he goes on to say to them that no one can come to the Father, can come to him unless drawn by the Father. Now, I was drawn to that phrase. What exactly does that mean, I wondered, to be drawn to the Father? Now, some of you know that I've been working on my paperwork for ordination. And when I say that, I don't mean I have a few forms to fill out. What, I mean, what that means is that I have more questions than you want to know about that I have to answer ranging from theology to leadership to personal growth. The Bible study that I'm doing on Monday nights, I had to write that for this as well. I had to turn in a sermon and answer questions about that. I mean, anywho, the list is long, longer than you want to hear about. The point of it is that I've been digging deep into our Wesleyan theology as I do this work. So it's all really fresh in my mind. And as I read that phrase and pondered over it, drawn, to, drawn by the Father, I thought of what John Wesley referred to as prevenient grace. Now Wesley says this in his sermon that's entitled The Scripture Way of Salvation. He says that prevenient grace creates within us the desire for God. And if we respond to God's bringing us to himself, our desire increases more and more. Prevenient grace is that grace of God that is working in us and around us and through us when we aren't even aware of it. It goes before us and it draws us to God. You see, these people that were standing there and they were grumbling and complaining, they wouldn't even be there in front of Jesus, working out their faith, asking questions, if it weren't for the grace of God that's been operating in and through them. You don't come to faith on your own, by your own deduction, by your own reasoning, by your own insight, by yourself. You are wooed, you are invited, you are coaxed by God. We are saved by grace alone. It's all God. God does the work of salvation. Grace opens our eyes to see our own sin and our need for the living God, the God that's made known in Jesus, the bread of life. The bread from heaven. And this bread, it's not an extra or a starter, something that's optional. See, in our culture, that's how we think of bread. You know, you, you go out to eat at the Texas Roadhouse, and they bring bread, those rolls, to your table when they seat you. It's the starter to the meal. And you could always refuse them, I mean, if that's even possible to refuse those roles. But that's not how people in the first century thought of bread. For them, bread was essential to their meal because bread was their utensil. They didn't have spoons and forks and knives like we have. They accessed their food with bread. It's still that way today in some parts of the world. When Vince and I traveled to Bangladesh back in 2015, every meal was accompanied by something called chapati or sometimes roti. And it's this bread that's common on the Indian on the continent of India. It's like a cross between naan and a tortilla. It's this delicious flatbread that I watched while these people from Bangladesh, they ate their entire meals with that bread. 
They knew how to fold it exactly right, and they could scoop everything up. Every last grain of rice on their plate could get scooped up with that bread. The chapati was not something that was optional or extra for their meals. It was essential. It was how they accessed their food. That is who Jesus is. He is the way that we can access and partake of the life that God offers us. Life is the main course. The bread is how we get the main course. It's how we experience the main course to its fullest potential. It's how we experience it abundantly. This bread is not a temporary solution like the manna in the wilderness. That bread was just to get them through the wilderness. It was nourishment for that moment. But whoever eats this bread, this living bread, who is Jesus, will have eternal life. Which in the Gospel of John means that they will have an intimate relationship with the Father. John uses eternal life as a synonym for believing Remember, believing is our work to do. And our work is relational. Believing, it brings us into this intimate relationship with God. That is eternal life, which actually is happening now. It isn't something that happens that we have to wait for. It's not something that happens after we die. It's right now. Right now, we can live in an intimate relationship with the Father. See, that's the thing for us. We, we tend to want religion to be something that's out there. We, we like to think of God as high and lifted up, distant, up there in heaven. But here, Jesus is saying that he is bread, something so simple. He is God in the flesh right here before our life before our eyes, something tangible. And while on one hand that is beautiful and relatable, it also can make us a bit uncomfortable. This incarnational God who came to dwell among us, we we don't quite believe that he is so accessible, so right here with us. It, It seems too good to be true. But my friends, it is true. Jesus is the bread of life. He says it over and over and over again in these 11 verses. By comparing himself to bread, he is making himself as necessary to us as the food we eat. He is our source of spiritual energy. He sustains us and he restores us. All we have to do is believe. This is grace. We do not do this on our own. But by grace alone, we come to this place. By grace alone do we believe. By grace alone do we realize our incredible need for the living bread that comes down from heaven. And this bread... It might just be my favorite one yet. It is sweet bread. The kind that lingers on your tongue, that's so fragrant that it fills the house with a beautiful smell. It's delicious and it leaves you wanting more and more and more. Today, as we close, our prayer is going to be a song. We've sung it before, so it should be familiar. If it's not, it's repetitive and catchy. You'll catch on really quick. It's called Breathe. And may it be your prayer today. And as you reflect on that and think about this sweet, sweet grace, you can come forward to one of the stations that I have for you up here.
And you can get, because what would it be without some bread to eat? You can get a piece of banana bread, one of my favorite sweet breads. Let the taste of it remind you of the grace of God that is drawing you closer and closer to God. You can come forward as you feel led today, whenever you want to. You can spend time at the altar if you'd like after you come forward. Um, I do have a gluten-free, dairy-free station in my little bowl so as not to mix anything. As you sing today with the team, let that be your prayer.
one of our four songs that you're going to pick from. Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. soul on fire that we did through the service the sheets are out there vote and let us know which kid picked which song and don't forget food and fellowship across the way wesley hall have a great week <laughs>